Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nogu Kumara and today's video is all about how to buy shares, the who, what, where, when and why. Um, before I go any further, I must say that this video does not constitute financial advice. If you are looking for something specifically tailored for you, please do seek a financial advisor and they can help you. Alright, let's go. So I'll be doing this video as follows. Firstly, I'll tell you why you should consider buying shares. Secondly, the documents that are required. Number three, guidance of the app. So I'll take you through how to use the app on your phone. Fourth, I'll debunk some of the myths that a lot of people have about buying shares and investing. And then lastly, I'll give you some tips and I'll answer some of the questions that you guys sent to me via Instagram. Or if I go any further, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe because you will definitely enjoy this video and you'll want to come back. Cool. Let's go. Okay, so you should consider buying shares for the following three reasons. One, it's to make money. You buy shares when they're very low and you sell them when they're very high. So if something has happened and there's some corruption happening in the company, that share price is going to tank. And that is when you look to go buy. So if there's any like corruption going on or some weird shit going on, that is when you should be looking to buy because their share price is like but when things are going well and the company's reaping profits and they do and they're taking care of their stuff that's when their share price is high and when it's high you can either hold because you like your company or if you're not really like into it and you just bought the shares and you kind of want to get rid of them sell them when they're high so yeah so we buy low and sell high number two you become a partial owner of the company as a shareholder you have a percentage holding in that company although like because we're so young and we're not investing a lot, we probably only own like zero point zero 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 two percent of the company. But it's still something. And when the company declares dividends, you get something, even though it's little because you only own so little. So by the way, dividends are just when a company is like, Okay guys, we've made profit, so we'd like to thank you guys for investing in our company. Here's some money. And they'll declare dividends and then everyone who has a share in that company will get a portion of that profit. Um, equivalent to the shareholding that they have so if you own two percent of the company you'll get two percent of the profits if you have zero point zero 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 two then you will get zero point zero 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 two percent of the profit cool if you really are crazy about being the owner and you love this whole shareholding thing, then maybe you should consider buying a lot more shares in one company so that you end up getting like a substantial amount. Like for example, if you own 60% of the shares in a company, you control it. Nothing can happen without you. But I don't know if that's what you're aiming for. I'm not, no, not me. Maybe my own company. The cool. third reason, the one that I believe is the most important, especially for us young South Africans, is the fact that South Africa is a developing country, meaning we are still growing as an economy. So you don't want to miss out on that growth, guys. We are like, you know, like life is like an exponential curve. Ne? Yo, the maths in me is jumping. Exponential curve. Meaning... Ooh, you're gonna take off no no it's the other way oh god i don't know yes 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 it is the other way it's the this is the exponential curve so we are still rising and you don't want to miss out on that rise because you buy for two rand and then something is worth 50 rand when we reach our peak and everyone who wants to come and buy shares at the peak will be paying 50 rand when you pay two rand so really do consider buying shares if you are someone who's looking to make money in the future do that generational wealth nonsense that we all want but did not have an opportunity to get and also like as much as when you invest you don't get you don't reap the rewards now in 10 20 30 years time guys your kids will be thanking you you'll be buying your kids maybachs for their sweet 16s you know okay so the app that i use to buy shares is called easy equities and if you click on the description box, which is down here below, just click down here, guys. There's a link to Easy Equities and it will take you straight to the download and you just download that app. Guys, I've made it easy, so don't bother going to App Store, just use that link. Cool. And on Easy Equities, you will need to register a profile. I'll show you when we do I'll show you when we're doing the tutorial, but I'm just telling And you. when you're on Easy Equities, these are the documents that you will require to fully register your account and start buying shares. A copy of your ID document proof of address and a copy of your bank statement with the proof of address and bank statement it needs to be something that has been sent to you in the last three months because you like 
because easy equities needs to verify that it's you it's where you stay and they just need to verify that you are an actual human and by the way that is a requirement you need to be a human or a company but you know with you guys you need to be human and you need to be above 18 so that's why they want your id document if you are below 18 like and you're a minor you can ask your parents or someone who is above 18 to trade on your behalf um but legally you're not allowed to trade as a minor because you are technically not in the right frame of mind to be investing okay cool now let's do the tutorial of the app i use the link to download is in the description box once you've downloaded the app you'll need to register an account this is just a normal thing. You'll enter all of your details and create an account. I won't lie, it takes a bit long to create your profile because now that you've created this, you still need to go and complete your profile. Here you have to select the type of account you are if you're over 18, under 18 or a corporate body. Then you need to enter in all your personal information, address, identity, tax and all of that. Okay, so on your Easy Equities account, you'll see that there's an Easy Equities tab. As you can see, I've got 97 Rand on there. Then there's one that says TFSA. And this just means tax-free savings account or whatever. And then there's an Easy Equities USD. This is if you want to buy shares that are listed in America. Um, I'm just going to go down here so that you can see. But all of these shares are for American companies. Cool. Let's just quickly go back to the South African shares. That's Easy Equities ZAR. And before you can start buying shares, you actually need to fund your account. So you'll go to the menu, go to um, my funds, deposits. And once you're there, you need to make sure that you're still on that ZAR tab. And then you just scroll down and you'll see how much you have by looking at the corner, 97,952. And here's your EFT reference, just in case you want to use the EFT method. So if you look down here in the middle, there are three ways of funding your account, either EFT, credit card, or SID. I'm not really sure what SID is. I think I have an idea, but I don't know. EFT rather is if you want to go and use your cell phone banking and then you can just enter these um, details and there's your EFT reference that is relevant to your Easy Equities account. Cool. You just need to make sure that you pick one that relates to your bank, FNB, Net Bank and so on. So you just pick one which is relevant to you and you go for it. Cool. I usually prefer the credit card. I know it says credit card, but you can actually use your debit card like any student account or whatever and you invest any amount of money that you want so i'm just gonna act like i'm gonna put in 20 rand and you'll see here there's a breakdown that there's a fixed charge of 160 and the percentage charge is 46 cents and in total the money that will get deducted from your bank account is 22 rand six cents cool okay you can fill in your card details i won't show you this because i don't want you guys to steal my money and then you deposit into easy equities cool the reason I prefer the credit card over the EFT is because credit card reflects immediately, whereas the EFT sometimes takes a day to clear, depending on how you clear your account. So credit card, I know they charge more. Unlike EFT, I think EFT, there is no additional, there is no um, fixed charge or whatever, um, but it takes longer. And if you're someone who wants to buy the shares right then, you probably do not want to wait. Cool. Then you go back to my investments and you say invest now. When you're on this invest now tab you'll just scroll down and you'll see filter options when you look here at the investment type you have equities you have etfs etns baskets bundles and crypto so you can choose whatever you want i'll do a quick run through of what each of these tabs mean first up is equities equities are actual shares this is what i usually use equities are stocks shares in a company if you buy stocks you're buying equities that means you're a partial owner or can be of shares in your company. You scroll down with equities, you'll see there's a top 40, there's a Thrive, there's a vehicles and parts, banks, beverages, and all of this, guys. I can promise you I have never gone through all of these tabs. I do not have the time. But if you're not sure of what companies you want to go for, do it. So here, I like using the search function, but this is for a category. So this is for like 
tobacco or whatever you know you need to know what category what i like doing is using the search function down here see down here because here you can search for actual companies so let's let me just try vodacom and see if they have any shares oh they do okay cool then you click on them cool vodacom and then they give you information about it and they tell you where it's listed see it's a mobile telecoms it's part of the top 40 meaning it's the top 40 um companies which most people buy shares in like they they're a good buy basically and then this is the important part you there's a what's been happening to vodacom in the market before you buy shares guys please make sure that you do look at this graph it's very important and you'll see they give you like a daily change and the zoom level this just this zoom level is what your graph is depicting so because it's 1m it's one month this is what has been happening over one month the share is currently at 128 but on the 12th of May, it was 1 to 8. And then you go down here on the 4th of May and so on. What I usually like looking at is 3 months and sometimes even 6 months. Because then you can really truly see what the normal share price of this um, share is and whether you're buying low or high. Cool. If the price is here at 128, we can see that there's been a point where the, the share was 100 rand. You know, so maybe buying here on its high is not really a good idea. So just wait it out. You know, we're going to try and wait and try and maybe see if it gets somewhere at least here. Hopefully, yeah. Cool. You scroll down and you look at the current prices. The last price refers to the price that was recorded on the day the markets closed the previous day. So if it is a Tuesday, this price, last price, refers to Monday's price. Selling at, if you have Vodacom shares at the moment and you want to sell them, you will sell them at 127 Rand. But if someone else is buying, they will have to buy at 132 Rand 65. So you can see this isn't really a good one because you're buying at such a high price and selling at a lower. So ideally, this is not the type of share that you would take. Cool. But let's continue. Here they explain how the pricing works. You can read all of that. And then here you scroll down and you can actually now start buying the equity. You can either use one of these bundles like buy for 250, 500, 1000. Or you can enter an amount. Remember I told you that I only have 90 something rand. So I'm going to buy shares for, let me just show you guys how little I can buy for, 15 rand. Then you can choose if it's a monthly one or a once off. I'm going to opt for once off. Then they say confirm your investment amount to buy. The trade value is 15 Rand. This is the investment cost, like the brokerage fee and all of that. I don't want to donate the amount that is due is 15 Rand 11. Cool. Confirm instruction to buy. And you see my funds have decreased. Congratulations. Your buy instruction has been placed. We will take care of the rest. See, you have a pending certificate. And the reason it's pending is because I am actually recording this on a weekend. The markets are closed on weekends. So this transaction will only clear on Monday. If you're buying during the week, it'll probably clear after a few minutes, hours or whatever. But yeah, basically, I just bought a Vodacom share for 15 Rand. It's not a full share. It's just a slice of the share. Cool. Now that you've bought your first share, you can go and check all the shares that you have. So just go here. You press the menu, my investments, and you look at your pending instructions. Because remember, they told you it was pending here. Your Vodacom is pending. Cool. Once it has cleared, you can go back to the menu and you say account overview. Or you can just use the tab here at the bottom. Cool. This is like, like I told you guys, I only started investing like a few weeks ago and i only put in 500 rand if you look here my account is worth 510 rand meaning i've made a profit of 3.2 percent cool um and here there's another split equities refers to the shares you have funds to invest is the amount you have left to use reserved cash is because of that pending transaction and so on income is at 0.3 because that's the profit i've made but the expense relates to some of my shares that have gone down. And then when you scroll all the way down, you can see your holdings and transactions, all that. If you click on holdings, it'll show you every single thing that you have bought. I do not want to show you what mine are because I don't want you guys to know what to buy, but you know. 
Okay, now that you've bought your share, you need to go down to those tabs at the bottom of your screen and go to invest now again. This is if you want to go and make another investment, okay? We've done equities. Let's look at ETFs quickly. ETFs and ETNs are very similar. So you'll see that. When you look at ETFs, the category tags have changed. You see, now they are ranked according to their risk from low, conservative, moderate, all the way to aggressive. This depends on the type of risk taker you are. If you are not sure what type of risk taker you are, just go to investment type and scroll to baskets. Um, we'll go back to ETFs now. Um, so with baskets, I'll just pick this one as an example and you'll scroll and you'll see they're like um they give you information a lot of information and then they say what's your risk number because you don't know your risk number you just click on that and then it'll redirect you to another thing that will help you determine your risk appetite because some people are willing to spend a lot more money than others and some people are willing to take a lot more risk you fill out your information this is just random information and then it'll redirect you to something else and you'll actually get your risk number once you have your risk number you'll actually use these numbers you see the 70 to 99 that depends on your risk okay cool i want to go back baskets and bundles are just predetermined baskets that are made by people and you can just pick whichever or whatever and all of these numbers refer to your risk appetite and remember you can go and calculate your risk number like i showed you cool and then lastly it's crypto cryptocurrency i'm not really familiar with cryptocurrency and as you can see there's literally only one thing to choose from um maybe if you go to the usd account there'd be more let's go see usd ah there is nothing okay cool lastly before i give you tips and tricks on how to trade i just want to go to the usd one um i just want to show you something it's pretty much the same thing as the South African one, just that it's American companies. Um, and let's say we want to have a look at McDonald's. I wonder if it's listed. I really don't know. Oh, wait, no, this is category. Let me search here rather. <laughs> let's see. Oh, McDonald's. All right. Let's see what's happening in McDonald's. Oh, it's kind of on the rise. Let's see what's happened in the three, last three months. Okay, cool. So you can see that their shares currently are $173, but on a normal high, like on a very high high, they can go up to like 217 So your aim would be to buy somewhere down here and make a profit. Cool, but I can't buy any of these because I don't have any amount in USD. So you can see that even if you have money in ZAR, it doesn't automatically mean you have money in USD. Wherever you upload money, you need to make sure that you're uploading to the correct tab. The last cool. tab that I haven't really touched on is the TFSA. This is the tax-free something something. Um, and with this one, you see it's very limited. It doesn't have a lot of stuff. Just that with the tax-free account, just be very cautious of when you use it because there are certain limitations to it. I know it's like one person can only invest up until 500000 um in their lifetime so maybe try not to play around with that until you fully understand you don't want to reach your five hundred thousand and you've just been in investing in stupid things so um maybe just wait i haven't really played around with this because i'm still trying to learn a lot more um but when i do start i will definitely let you guys All right, know. guys i hope that me taking you through the easy equities app was useful and that you kind of have an idea of what's going on obviously you won't know what's going on from the word go and that's why you need to play around with it just like twitter just like instagram you got there you learned around you'd go in once a day just to browse and finally now you're like a pro now i'm going to move on to number four i want to debunk some myths that are present about buying shares and investing cool Number one, it's not an easy money maker. Don't... <laughs> 
if you think this is your way to make a million in three months no please just stop watching because it's not gonna happen if that was the case i wouldn't be doing this video because i would have a million already Number two it's not a way to avoid taxes you will always pay taxes the system is created to make you pay taxes whether you like it or not the only thing that can happen is that your income tax can decrease, but that's only because you're paying dividend tax and securities tax and all of that. Don't stress if you don't know what I'm talking about because you don't need to worry about it. Easy Equities already covers the tax for you. So, for example, if you get dividends, a company will declare 100% of dividends and SARS wants 15%. When you get your dividends... Easy Equities will only give you the 80% because the 20% has already been paid to SARS. You do not have to go and submit any return that you receive dividends because Easy Equities has already paid SARS on your behalf. So don't stress. It's called a withholding tax. I got about eight questions that I got from my Instagram. A lot of people were asking like the same thing. So I grouped one of them into one big thing but i've got eight different ones the first one is what's the minimum you need to start investing when you're buying shares on easy equities there's really no minimum like i know you can buy shares for as little as 10 rand and that still counts so there is no minimum whatever you have you can invest but when you want to invest separately like not on easy equities with like an investment company and all of that usually they'll give you like a minimum that you have to invest and usually it's like 500 rand or something or 1000 rand because they don't want to be investing your two rands and your three rand number two i got this question a lot how do i know i'm making a good investment you don't you know it's just it's it's trial and error you try your best and see how it happens the thing is there's no formula to investing and there's no formula to buying shares because if we all if someone knew what the shares would do in two months time they would all go and buy shares there so there's no way to predict what will happen but what does happen is that sometimes um people believe something will happen and then it kind of happens i forgot what it's called but i'll give you an example it's like that tesla company that elon musk company yeah a lot of people think elon musk is very smart so they have a lot of trust in him so they go and buy a lot of shares in his company even though his company is probably not doing that great but because a lot of people believe in him the share price inflates and you'll find that his share price is like something crazy. But that's only because of public perception. And then when the truth comes out, it just drops. Like it, it flops. It flops because there was no basis over why they wanted the share to be so high. So when, you need, when you're buying your share, guys, the only thing you can do is do your research if you can. And I say if you can because not everyone cares about financial markets. Not everyone cares about companies. I'm not someone who will sit on Bloomberg and read news articles and, and do... No, I don't have time for that. I will just buy and see how it goes. And thing is, I spend a lot of time on Twitter. So when people are talking on Twitter, I'm like, hmm, something is happening here. Let me go check what the shares are doing, you know? But I think the best advice that I've had on how to choose the shares to buy is think like the consumer you are. Stop trying to think like some white guy in a boardroom um, who's got 5 million. No, think like the person that you are. You know the products you use, so you know what companies are making money. For example, what I do is I think of something that I enjoy and that I use almost every day. And if not every day, at least once a week. And something that I believe I'll still be using in 10 years time. And something that probably can't be replaced by technology. So I'll just give you a random example. Lotion. We will always need to lotion our bodies. So your lotioning companies are probably a good buy because there's no point in time where you will decide that you are done lotioning. You are done. There's another thing that my dad told me, he was like, try and buy shares from companies that build habits on people basically that that are addictive so like cigarettes alcohol beauty cosmetics people are crazy about those things and they will never go out of style they will always want more so those companies are your safe investments because you know that there's no way no one's going to be drinking in 10 years time dude we know alcohol kills we know alcohol can give you alcohol poisoning but people don't stop drinking food as well agriculture is a great thing to look into because we will always need food and now there's like gmos and all that so like just use your mind and think about the things that you use 
um don't don't think about someone else don't think about what someone said is a good investment think about yourself what do you use in your household what's the one thing that's always there in your household invest in it because each time you go buy it at pick and pay you're paying yourself think about it number three is it wise to buy shares from startups it depends firstly let's define a startup for those who don't know a startup is a company that is new probably something innovative so it's in its early stages so no one really knows what's going to happen it could be good because startups have a lot of growth potential there's there's a really good chance that this startup can do really well and blossom and take over the industry blah 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 but also there's that really high risk of failure because most startups do not last more than a year maybe two so it really depends and also it's up to you to do your research. What type of startup is it? Is it something that you believe will work or have you heard from someone else saying that they're going to fund this startup so you think you should also join in? Um, and just be careful about investing in things just because your friend said so because they could have already invested but things are going bad. So they try to attract more people to buy the share so that the share goes up and then they leave because they know that it's actual crap. Cool. Number four, is investing in investment companies such as Alan Gray and Vestech a good idea for beginners? It depends. It depends on how much money you have and how much you're willing to invest and also why you want to invest. So like for example, if you want unit trust and all of that, um, you know, it's, it's probably better to go to a professional because then they can collect all your amounts, combine them with other people and then go and invest like for you on your behalf and the pros of that is that like they're professional so they know what they're doing there's a really high chance that you guys will make a good return um because they make use of all these special tools and they've gone to school for it they have actuaries who are trying to predict the future and all of that so you know it is a good thing in that aspect the cons though are that it's really costly like like i said before there, there's a there's probably a minimum fee of like 500 um or you have to make a lump sum of like 5000 it's not profitable for them as a big company to be trading uturanga no turanga lumka no turanga show and all of that so they need to have a minimum and also guys when you and also guys when you do use a like a professional person or a broker you also need to pay a brokerage fee because basically you have to charge for their services no one does anything for free so you could buy shares but pay a lot more than someone else who's trading for themselves but you could buy better shares because you've had a professional but also it doesn't mean that just because it's a professional you will definitely make an income and all of that because it's it's all just trial and error no one knows what the no one knows what the market will do number five how to buy shares strategically on a student budget like i said guys there's no minimum so there is no need to budget what i can say for someone who is on a budget like myself do not invest a lot do not invest so much that you are broke and you actually can't live a normal life just because you're investing. Because there's no point forking out your full salary. Pa, you bought shares, but you don't know how the shares are going to go. Because next thing you put in 50,000 and then your shares drop and they're like 2,000. So you have lost out on 48,000 that you could have done a lot more things with. You know, you could have finished your apartment. So when you invest money, invest money that you won't think about. It mustn't be like... Oh, I'm parting with this money and you and you keep thinking about it. number six are shares more or less risky than cryptocurrency okay i'm gonna give you an answer that i personally believe and i say like i specify personally because i could be wrong and if i am wrong please do correct me in the comments but to my understanding cryptocurrency is just a digital currency it's just cash but like in digital form but the thing with digital currency is that there's so much hype around it because no one really knows what's happening um it's 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 money of the future so there's a lot of hype and that's why the value of it is kind of inflated it's it, it's a lot more than what paper money is worth cool. i do believe that cryptocurrency is a lot riskier than buying shares for the following reasons one cryptocurrency is unregulated you know the government is still struggling to find ways to tax it no one knows who they're talking to and trading with because of the blockchain thing because the government can't tap into that you can just understand how risky that must be because if someone takes your money there's no way that you can go and find them if the government is struggling to that so like it's it's really inflated and think of bitcoin bitcoin was worth so much and then it just dropped randomly because people realized that actually bitcoin is not all of that and that's the thing with like these currencies that are 
I don't want to say abstract, but abstract because you don't know where they get their value from. So they can easily go high because there's no way that you can measure that. Okay, no, this is reasonable. This is not. And then when it drops, it's a really huge drop. So I am someone who would prefer shares because at least with companies, you can see the growth. You can see indicators that tell you that, oh, this company is going to do well. Oh, this company is going to do really badly. If a company has a lot of fraud, a lot of people changing their positions, like um, if they they're losing their top management your cfo ceos you and you as a person will know that mm -mm, something is happening why are all these big shots leaving something is about to come out you sell whereas a cryptocurrency you don't know what's going on because it's just it's this fantasy you know and you're just riding the wave and you don't know when you're gonna drown so i personally i personally am not at the stage of cryptocurrency maybe i will get in and i'll let you guys know but at the stage no Okay, guys, I want to give you eight tips on how to pick what to invest in and stuff. Number one, you need to diversify when you buy shares. Don't buy shares in one company or in one industry because you're just putting all your eggs in one basket. And if you trip and fall, all your eggs are broken. So split them up. For example, um, for example, if you are investing in ice cream, also invest in hot chocolate so that when it's cold and people aren't buying ice cream, they're still buying hot chocolate. So you're still making money. Number two shares shares versus investments shares i still prefer right now because they're very flexible i.e they're liquid so if you want your money back tomorrow you can request an easy equities because you back your money unlike an investment where usually you have to wait like five years or ten years before you can touch your money shares allow you that flexibility just in case you need your one thousand rand back number three Tax statements are available on the Easy Equities app. So, like, if you're someone who is um, a taxpayer and you need to declare things, there are tax certificates on the app. So, just download them and just um, attach them to your tax return. I don't know how to fully do this. So, I will do an, I will do a video closer to tax season when I have to file my first tax return. Um, and I'll tell you guys, like, I'll let you guys know. I'll actually do it. Not that I'll do it on camera because then you guys will see how much I earn, how much I pay. Like, I don't want you guys to see that. But I will tell you how the tax return thing works, especially with shares so that you guys know in the future. Cool. Number four, this is for accounting students, people who are probably going to become CAs or auditors and all of that. Guys, please be very cautious of the shares that you buy because they can lock you out of a lot of things. So if you buy shares in company A, you cannot go and audit company A because you have a financial interest in it. So if you know that there's a company that you really want to audit and you really want to be on that team, just don't buy the shares from that company. Um, or, or, and this is a big or, you can sell the shares. Like, it's fine. Like, it's not a big deal. You can buy the shares, ride the wave. But when you become an auditor, just sell those shares so that you don't have a financial interest. But things could change, especially because you're only investing, like, 20 rand. So, it's not, like, a lot of money. Um, it's not like you're going to go and, like, mess up their shares just so that your 20 rand becomes a 40 rand, you know. Um, but just be, just be aware that that could happen. Number five, do not use a lot of money, especially now in the beginning. Guys, I think I put in... I put in like 500 rand on my account when I first started trading. Uh, not trading. Uh, when I first started buying shares, I only put in 500 rand, which may be a lot for other people. You know, I'm saying 500 rand easily. And that's because I had money because of Corona. I only started like, I only started buying shares like during Corona. So I'm still also quite new on the Easy Equities app. So I'm not a pro. That's why I was like, I wish someone had made a video because when I wanted to do, when I wanted to buy shares, there was no video that could show me. It is, um, don't put in a lot of money, put in money that you don't care about. Oh, and also guys, there's a demo account, so use it. I couldn't use the demo account because I don't, like, I can't take something seriously if there's no money in it. Like, it's not my money, so what am I looking at? So, I, demo accounts do not work for me. I'm someone who likes to swim with the sharks, I go straight in. But... Be a lot more cautious than me and, you know, like, play with your demo accounts to see, especially if you want to put in a lot of money in. Number six, you won't find all companies when you search for them because not all companies are public. So you can't own shares in every single company in the world. But two, Easy Equities is limited to South African um, shareholding companies as well as the USA. So you might not be able to buy shares from the UK madagascar and all of that um but yeah also some shares some companies even though they are public they probably don't have shares that are easily tradable so there aren't any shares for you to buy but the company is still public. seven 
always try get bee shares i don't know how people get bee shares but i really do think that you should get them i think you need to know the right people and know it and be at the right place at the right time maybe just google online and be like bee shares available or whatever because they won't show up on easy equities because easy equities isn't only used by people of color so this is just outside of easy equities if you do come across any bee shares number one please just call me and be like listen there's some BE shares being let go here, come through. Please, I beg you. Number two, you must also try and look out for them because I don't know if I don't know if they're still common because like we're quite progressive now apparently as a country. BEE might kind of be like fizzled out and like they already have the quote that they need. But if you do find BEE shares and you are a person of color, definitely do subscribe to those because usually you'll get shares in a company, a really good company also, um, at a very low price because they're just trying to get more black people into the company. Um, yeah, I, like... <laughs> It sucks, but you know, guys, you have to make your color work for you sometimes. Number eight, lastly, I told you this when we were going through the app. Make sure you look at the graphs. Do not buy shares when they are super expensive because you are just going to make a loss, loss, loss the whole time. And yeah, that is just pointless. But yeah, it's not really pointless if you just want shares in XYZ and you don't really care about how much money you're paying. But just look at the graphs, study the graphs, even though you don't want to read the articles, at least look at the graphs and see the trend that the company has followed. Cool. Alright guys, that's the end of my video. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to click on the link below in the description box to download the Easy Equities app. Use that link guys because it takes you directly there. Allow me to help you. Don't go searching on App Store, just use the link please i'm coming to help you nice um don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel my next video is going to be a uh, sis dolly which is like a ask miss k basically i'm giving you guys some advice you guys can send me any questions um any issues any stories that you have that you'd like me to offer some of my two cents my advice on them um you can either dm me on instagram or you can email me my email will be attached in the description box as well um so just you know guys i think entertain any please just tell me what story you have what you want me to advise you on please don't make it serious i i don't want to do a financial video every single week this is a fun video it's a relaxed video it's a video for us to laugh at you know so if you have relationship problems ask me if you have problems with your mom or your dad ask me if you're trying to um yeah if 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 you yeah if you want to ask me anything that you wish you could have asked your older sister this is your chance even if i'm not older than you i am your older sister on this channel so you know okay guys thank you so much for watching that's all i have for today don't forget to like and subscribe and also check out the referral code that i have in the description box go and download your easy let me know guys like let me know if you start buying shares you can tag me on instagram because the nice thing when you buy shares is that they tell you oh you've bought shares share with your friends you know and then you can just tag me and i'll see if you're buying shares or not